Well howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to another episode in our series on getting started in fly fishing. So far we've talked a little bit about the sport, some of the common misconceptions and in the past few episodes we've taken a look at fly rods and talked about the variables when it comes to rods. So number two on our list if you remember back is going to be fly reels. Um, the fly reel is a pretty important thing to have, but it's not as important as many would like you to believe. So let's take a look at what a fly reel actually does, okay? A fly reel basically does three different things. And the first thing a fly reel does is it stores your ever important fly line. This is where you keep your 80 foot of fly line and you're also going to find out that there's usually at least 100 yards of what's called fly line backing on there. But this is the place where you keep your 80 foot of fly line. The second thing that the fly reel does is it retrieves your line, whether that's at the end of the day and you're reeling up to pack up and go home, or you've got a fish on the end of the line and you're reeling that fish in. The third thing a fly reel does is it provides some resistance, what we call drag. When you're fighting a fish and that fish takes off running, there's some resistance here in this reel that can help slow the fish down, basically. And a lot of reels will have an adjustable drag system, okay? This one, if I back the knob off all the way, you're going to see that there's virtually no resistance and this reel will almost free spool. If I crank this drag knob down, there's quite a bit of resistance, okay? And whether or not you need a, a very sophisticated, uh, heavy duty, super strong drag system, that's going to be dependent on what you're fishing for. And if you're average Joe or average Jane, which you've heard me talk about before, most of you are not going to need a high tech drag system. Okay. But let's take a look at the variables that you want to understand when it comes to purchasing your first fly reel. And the first variable is how is that reel made? Okay. And there's two ways. The first way is that reel is cast and basically the cast reel is hot molten aluminum that's poured into a basically a mold, almost like a, a child's toy or something along those lines that hot molten aluminum is poured into a mold or even some might be made out of, of cast uh, graphite composite. Uh, but most of them are going to be aluminum and, and a cast reel is typically going to be your least expensive. Whereas a machined reel, a machined reel is going to be carved basically or machined out of a block of aerospace grade bar stock aluminum. A machined reel is going to be your most durable. It's going to be able to withstand the rigors of a heavy fight, a hard battle with a big fighting fish. And it also can withstand more heat. If a big fish is running really hard, it's going to generate a lot of heat as it's spinning and a machine reel will be able to absorb that heat a little bit better. A cast reel may actually break down in the heat of a battle with a big fish. The way I always like to describe it might be a little bit extreme, but if you run over it with your car, a cast reel is probably going to be crushed. If you run over a machine reel with your car, it might be a little bit bent, but probably not going to break it. I guess a better analogy would be if you f drop it on a rock or you fall and hit it on a rock, that cast reel might crack or even break. A machine reel is probably going to hold up. Okay. So for the most part, you know, in the past 10 years, they've come a long way with casting and there's some fantastic, um, there's some fantastic cast reels out there on the market that are really quite durable. So you don't feel like you have to run out and get a machined reel if you can afford one and or you need one. Certainly it's not going to hurt you, but there's nothing wrong, especially these days with a good old fashioned cast fly reel. Okay. So let's take a look at the next variable. And the next variable is the type of drag system. Okay. And there are basically two 
types of drag systems to keep it simplified. The first is called a click drag. Okay, you also hear it referred to a, a click and Paul, P-A-W-L, or you may also refer, hear it referred to as a spring and Paul. And a, a click drag reel basically, for the most part, doesn't have much drag system to it at all. Really the difference between retrieving it in and the drag system that's there, there's really not much difference. And the way that this works is it's basically a simple leaf spring and it, that leaf spring pushes on this pawl, P-A-W-L, which is the little triangular piece there. And that pawl then in turn pushes on the sprocket of my reel, okay? And that's where you get the resistance is basically from this little um, piece of metal that's in turn pushing on the spool. It doesn't really do much, but maybe you don't need much. If you're just fishing for smaller trout, for bluegill, you may not even need a drag. And in fact, this particular reel, which is a great selling uh, uh, machine spring and pawl reel uh, that Orvis makes, um, it doesn't even have an adjustment knob. You can go in there and tweak how it's adjusted um, by rotating uh, this piece right here and that uh, uh, determines the amount of pressure you're putting on but still you're not going to notice a big difference. Really kind of retro and a lot of people are going back to this you know kind of to go to the mono e mono kind of concept of not having a heavy duty drag system to fight the fish. But then your next type of drag system is going to be a disc drag. And most of, your, most of your fly reels these days, even some in the lesser price, are all, almost all going to be disc drag reels. Think of it this way, just like the disc brakes on your car. You've got some sort of pad, and there's all kinds of different ways that they do this, but there's some sort of pad. And as you tighten down on the drag adjustment knob, which most of your reels are going to have, as you tighten down on that drag adjustment knob, you're sandwiching the spool, the rotating part here, up against that pad, okay? So just like the disc brakes on your car concept, uh, a disc drag reel is gonna have a pad in there that you're sandwiching tighter, which slows down the re revolution of the spool. You're basically, you think of it this way. Most of your disc drag reels, the pad, or the braking system is going to be some sort of basically plastic. Okay, a lot of them will call it Delrin, which is a fancy word for plastic. So <clears throat> the plastic obviously are going to be lesser expensive. Uh, they may not be quite as durable in the long run, and they they may be a little herky jerky if you're really cranking that drag down. Now your next type of drag system is going to be made out of cork. Yes, believe it or not, good old fashioned Portuguese cork. And cork, if the plate is made out of cork, cork for years and years and years has set the standard in high end, high performance fly reels. And cork creates a very strong and a very smooth drag system. You know, I bought my cork drag reels for fishing in the salt water and fishing for big fish like pike and muskie many, many years ago, and I still fish those old cork drag reels. But these days, kind of a buzzword is carbon fiber. A lot of your, um, a lot of your really high-end reels, like your T-bores, your Ables, your Nautilus, uh, your hatch reels, they're going to be uh, carbon fiber, the discs, and they may even combine carbon fiber and stainless steel that are discs and that's where you're getting um, the resistance for, to create the drag. And they claim that carbon fiber, it doesn't deflect like some other materials when you really crank it down and they claim that it's gonna last forever. So I'm kind of an old fashioned guy and my high end reels are cork drag, although carbon fiber is certainly a buzzword here these days. So click and pull versus disc drags and then you wanna know what the disc is made out of is it plastic, is it cork, is it carbon fiber, okay? Um, another buzzword when it comes to fly reels 
is standard arbor versus large arbor. And basically a standard arbor reel, the spindle that the line is wrapped around is going to be small and a large arbor reel, the arbor is going to be much bigger. Okay. Here's kind of that retro click and pawl reel and it's a standard arbor reel. You'll be able to see that the spindle we'll call it is very small and then the line gets wrapped around that small spindle. Whereas this is a large arbor reel and you're going to notice that the arbor or the spindle is much bigger. And basically what a large arbor reel does in a nutshell is for every time that you crank that large arbor reel, you're bringing in one and a half, maybe even two times as much fly line per revolution of the spool. So every one time that you, crank, you bring it around the circle, it brings in more fly line. This may be important to you if you're fishing for big fish, even a, a carp these days that can run really fast far out and then he runs back at you really quick. It might be an advantage to you to pick up that line a lot quicker. Certainly in the salt water, I definitely want a large arbor reel. Wouldn't want to do it without it. But if you're average Joe or average Jane, friends, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference to you if you and I are fishing and we decide to go have a beer and you've got this reel and I've got this reel. Well, guess what? I'm going to get to the bar about nine seconds quicker than you are if I have this reel. It may not make that big of a difference. I wouldn't worry about it too much. But the good news is most of your reels out there on the market today are large arbor. Back in the 90s when John Bauer first introduced large arbor, they were like flat screen TVs. They were $200 more than a standard arbor. These days, almost everything is large arbor, so nothing to worry about. A lot of times you'll see standard arbor SA or LA as the designation in the name of a reel or the description, and now you know what that stands for. And last but not least, um, I need to mention it when it comes to fly reels, a big buzzword these days is sealed drag. All the kids are coming in and they want to know whether this reel has a sealed drag system. And basically what that means, for example, Nautilus is a fine example of sealed drag reels. Uh, Hatch fly reels make a sealed drag. Abel's now come out with one. Tibor has one. Even a, some of your lesser priced reels are now sealed drag reels. And what that means is, is that the drag system, the drag plates that create your resistance are completely sealed up, impervious to water, the elements, sand, grit, and you typically don't have to do any maintenance, no lubrication. Um, everything's sealed up in there. As opposed to an open drag system, such as Able is a fine example, and the Able reels, the drag surface, this is the cork drag surface, it's actually exposed. Sure, it can get wet, it can get sand in there, but it's not that tough to open this thing and clean it out, okay? So uh, I've been selling non-sealed drag reels for nearly 30 years of my life. I've been using non-sealed drags, and yes, you may have to do a little bit of maintenance, but it's not that big of a deal, and I wouldn't beat yourself up over whether the, it has a sealed drag or not. It's not really gonna be important to you as a beginner, okay? So, <clears throat> that's fly reels. Uh, remember, I'm gonna tell you that the fly reel is very overrated. In our coming series, we're gonna get into the fly line, the leader, and some flies. And those are by far your most, your top three most important pieces of gear. Really doesn't matter. Get the best reel you can afford. Um, now you know that you've got machine versus cast and the differences there. You know that you've got click and pull versus disc drags and it's, it's important to know what that disc drag is made out of. Most often in your entry level stuff, it's gonna be plastic or Delrin. If you wanna get something better, cork or carbon fiber. You're probably gonna get a large arbor reel because that's mostly what's out there these days. 
And then sealed drag versus non-sealed, I don't think it's a big issue, but I'd be remiss if I didn't teach you about it. So as always, if you have any questions about selecting the right fly reel, you give us a call here at Mad River Outfitters, send us an email, we're always happy to consult, or visit your local fly shop and talk to the folks that really know these products. So as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and pay attention to this Getting Started in Fly Fishing series. We've got a lot more coming at you. Thanks for watching.